welcome back to my channel for another reading vlog. It's been a few weeks since I filmed one because I've had a lot of things come up. I've attempted to film a reading vlog pretty much every single week since my last one, but it just hasn't worked out. But I guess I'm going to start with my TBR for the week. First and foremost, I still need to finish Old Enough by Haley Jacobson. I'm 25% of the way into the book. It's been so long since I picked it up that I probably just have to restart it, but that's okay. I don't mind doing that. I've also been reading Bookshops and Bone Dust, and that's actually the book I plan on finishing today. It's by Travis Baldry, and it is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It just is nice and cozy and has real world problems on a much smaller scale, so I enjoy it. And something else I think I need to start doing is rereading the Shades of Magic trilogy because The Fragile Threads of Power is coming out in September and it's been so long since I read A Darker Shade of Magic that, mm. I mean, the only way I can read The Fragile Threads of Power is by rereading the entire Shades of Magic trilogy. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing that this week too. Wish me luck. The first thing I'm going to do for this vlog is take you on a little journey. Tuesday and I have already done a lot today. So I finished Bookshops and Bone Dust yesterday. And as I mentioned, uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. I just, I really love this book and I would read so many stories set in this universe. It doesn't even have to follow the same characters. It's just a nice universe with decent stakes. Like nothing is too stressful and you're pretty sure the characters are gonna make it through. That's a big thing. I enjoy about the series so far. But basically in Bookshops and Bone Dust, Viv has gone on her first mission with the Rackham's Ravens. So Viv ends up getting injured during her first mission with the Rackham's Ravens and she gets stabbed in the leg and basically left in a little seaside town. And she ends up going to a bookshop and the bookshop owner just like hands her a book and was like, hey, read this. You don't have to pay for it if you, you know, bring it back. So Viv discovers a love of reading and she helps the bookshop owner revitalize her shop because it's really worn down. The owner doesn't really know what she wants to do with it and she's not even sure she still wants to be in this business anymore. So that is essentially the premise of Bookshops and Bone Dust. And the thing I liked about this is if you haven't read Legends and Lattes, you can absolutely read bookshops and bone dust and you can also read them in either order like it does not matter so you can read this one first when it comes out in november it's supposed to come out november 7th or you can just read legends and lattes first and then wait for bookshops and bone dust i really enjoyed it i would definitely give it five out of five stars i haven't officially reviewed it yet but i'm going to do that sometime in the next couple of days I went on a walk and started listening to the audiobook for a darker shade of magic by v e schwab and I am currently on page 86. So I made some really good progress here. This is my second time reading it. Yeah, that's where I'm at today. Yesterday I went to a park and read on a like swing bench thing and it was fun. That was like my special adventure. And today I went on a walk as well and I've gotten some work done today. I've been pushing myself a little too hard lately, so I'm going to try to take it easy the next two or three days. So 
we'll see how well that goes. I really miss filming, so I think today I might want to film another legacy challenge video and something else I haven't decided yet. I like, I really need to get better at planning, but it seems like a lot of times when I plan things, I don't actually film them anyway. So maybe I just need to jump into it and film whatever I'm excited about in the moment. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. I have some things to do. Like I need to still get ready for the garage sale we're having this weekend. And I, I don't really know what else I have planned. I just finished a really big project and I still have um, a few things to do for another work project. I probably shouldn't get too relaxed, but I don't know. I need it. So I'm going to take you along with me. <music> those days that is way more stressful than it needs to be. So I made the mistake of going to Barnes and Noble and I bought a lot of stuff. The book haul event is still going on right now. So I blame that because I got a lot of books for buy one, get one half off that I don't think, I don't know. They always have paperbacks that buy one get one half off, but it just seems like they had more that I wanted than they usually do. So yeah, I actually just went in to buy the hardcover of I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman because that was gonna be my little treat for finishing my most recent writing project. Yeah, I went a little overboard. I got Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. It's, um, it was $13.99 and I've been wanting it, so I uh, got it. The buy one, get one half off books are where things derailed a little. So I only got books that I have already read because that is just, that is how I buy books. I read them from the library and if I think I might want to read them again or if I consider them all-time favorites, then I will buy them. So let's start with People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I loved this book. I read this during my vacation and it's the only paperback Emily Henry book that I don't have. I think Happy Place is only available in hardcover right now. The rest of my Emily Henry books are paperbacks and I like to keep it consistent. So I'm gonna wait until that one's in paperback. And then I got Delilah Green Doesn't Care and Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. This one has a stain on, oh, that's fine. I think the next book in the series is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. I really like these books. They're fun, they're cute and really enjoy the covers. And then the final book that I got is one that I enjoyed for the most part, but I kind of rushed through the end of it. So I genuinely don't remember the last 25% of the book. And that is Gideon the Night. So yeah, like I said, um, I liked it, but I don't remember much of what happens in the book. And I can't proceed with the rest of the series until I reread this. So I'm gonna give it another go. Anyway, for me, this is a pretty massive book haul. I don't know of a single time I've acquired this many books in a single day, aside from for school. Been going through it apparently. So that's my update. How are you doing? <laughs> updates for you because truth be told I haven't done much today. I went on a walk. I had coffee with some pumpkin syrup in it. I'm on page 315 of A Darker Shade of Magic so I am almost done with my reread. So that's pretty cool. That did not take long at all because I started it yesterday. I love how it took absolutely no time for me to get back into this story 
So if you don't know, A Darker Shade of Magic takes place in Red London, where the main character Kel lives. And in this world, there are different Londons with different levels of magic. So Black London was sealed off completely because the magic just got too chaotic. And then White London is dying because of its proximity to Black London. Red London's thriving because they're right between, you know, the dying magical place and then a place with no magic, which is Grey London, which is the London that we know. And Grey London does not have magic. But I feel like most of the people who watch my channel probably would have read the Shades of Magic series by now. I first read this book fairly soon after it came out, so I don't remember if I read it in 2015 or 2016, but I loved it then. There are a lot of details that I've forgotten in the eight years since it came out, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I thought I wouldn't love it as much because I definitely struggled when I read uh, Conjuring of Light and like it definitely just kept losing my attention even though I think I gave it a higher rating on Goodreads. It's just how it is. I'll enjoy certain elements and still give it a high rating. Anyway, I'm really liking this. A lot of things I forgot about. Um, it's a lot darker than I remember. <laughs> darker but I'm really liking it. So I really look forward to continuing on with the rest of the series. I think I'm just gonna marathon it and sneak in some other books in between. Tomorrow I am going to my mom's house to pick up some more stuff for the garage sale and then she's gonna stay with us because we live in a higher populated area than her, so we're combining the garage sale efforts. So yeah, she's gonna be here for a couple of days. I don't know how much I'm gonna vlog when she is here, but that's everything I have. Hi, kitties. I am definitely about to finish A Darker Shade of Magic. Last night, I also didn't um, mention this, but I started reading The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. I have the e-arc of that and it comes out on September 5th. So by the time you see this video, it'll be out. It just follows a character named Este who is at this private boarding school. I think it's called Radcliffe Academy. And she's trying to learn more about her father and then she gets into some trouble on her first day and things kind of escalate from there. I think I'm about 20% of the way into the book but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's kind of like almost a dark academia thing with some ghosts intertwined. Uh, having a lot of fun with that. Also I am doing laundry because my mom's visiting tonight for the garage sale. Also um, today's the day that uh, Taylor Swift announced that her like the movie of the Eras tour is going to be in theaters and I got three tickets to that. One of my high school friends is going to the same showing same time as me so we're probably gonna sit together which is gonna be fun especially since we haven't talked in a while but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Definitely gonna make some friendship bracelets. Definitely gonna dress up like, I don't know, some era and I just whacked myself in the eye. That's mostly everything I have going on. I'm also working on the books and builds video so that should be up soon. It'll definitely be up by the time you see this. Okay, I'm gonna go, bye. Hello, it is Sunday. The last couple of days have been really busy because of the garage sale that I've talked about nonstop. We ended up selling my dad's truck which if you are new here, my dad passed away last year and he had a truck that we decided to sell and we sold like some other random things. And once the sale was over, we took everything that was left over and donated it. So that part is done. It's a relief. I mean, there's still a lot more that we have to go through and organize, but it feels like the first major step is done over. I've done a little bit of reading the last few days. I actually finally picked up Old Enough by Haley Jacobson again and I am now 85% of the way through it which is nice. I knew that the book was going to be difficult. It's a difficult read just because of the subject matter so definitely check out the trigger warnings for that before you read it but it's really well written. Now that I've started I'm very engaged in the story 
So I'm going to finish that today and I'm going to read as much of the Library of Shadows as I can today as well. It's we're pretty far into the day right now so I don't know how much reading I'll get to do but that's fine. I just really want to relax with a couple of books because I've had a very busy few weeks so yeah, that is going to be the rest of my day, I think. We might have plans this evening, but I don't know for sure. It is Monday, and that means it is time for me to close out this weekly reading vlog. First and foremost, I read Bookshops and Bone Dust, and that is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, but you can read them in either order. Bookshops and Bone Dust follows Viv before she opens her coffee shop in Legends and Lattes, and in the book she's new to the Rackham's Ravens, and she gets injured on her first mission with them. And then she gets left at an inn in this like sleepy seaside village and ends up befriending the bookshop owner who just keeps giving her books in exchange for her help. She just like helps revitalize the bookshop. Then a mysterious traveler in gray shows up and Viv thinks that he has a connection to this necromancer that the Rackham's Ravens have been hunting down. So she decides to basically just take things into her own hands and try to deal with the situation before Rackham returns to pick her back up. I really enjoyed it. I had the advanced reader copy from NetGalley and I also managed to get the ALC from Libro FM. So I switched between listening to the audiobook and just reading the ebook version and I just really enjoyed it. It's not quite as good as Legends and Lattes, but like it's so close. I love both of them and I would read so many books in this universe. I really think that Travis Baldry is working his way up to being one of my favorite authors, so I highly recommend this when it comes out on November 7th. Next, I reread A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and A Darker Shade of Magic follows Kel. He's one of the last Antari, so he can travel between parallel Londons, and he refers to them as Red London, Gray London, White London, and then um, they're all closed off from Black London where magic consumed it. And White London is dying, Red London is thriving, Gray London has nothing, and Gray London is essentially the London we all know. On an official note, Kel basically travels between Londons on behalf of his king, and unofficially he's a smuggler. He ends up with this magical stone that has extremely powerful and from Black London and this causes some problems and he also ends up running into Delilah Bard who has her own past and he gets kind of stuck with her on this little mission to get rid of this stone. There were a lot of parts of this book that I remember just as clearly as when I read it the first time, but I was actually a little surprised by some things that happened in the last half of the book, so apparently I didn't remember everything from this series. I do look forward to continuing on with the series because The Fragile Threads of Power comes out soon, and it's been a while since we've gotten a new V.E. Schwab book, so I really look forward to it. And then the final book that I finished is Old Enough by Haley Jacobson. It's one I've been reading since June, but I kind of stopped because I knew that it had a much heavier subject matter. And basically it just follows a sophomore in college named Savannah and she goes by Sav. And she is basically starting her spring semester and she's in a gender studies class with some people and they have a lot of deep discussions and it kind of forces her to unpack some things that happened to her when she was 16 and the fallout of all of that. That stuff is really difficult but the book also has like a great found family element. So Sav recently came out as bisexual so she started to form a really tightly knit queer friend group and that has been a really transformative experience for her. I really enjoyed this book. Definitely check the trigger warnings. I probably still should have waited to read it, but I'm glad I finished it because it is a good book and I would definitely be interested in reading more books from Haley Jacobson. Pick it up if you want some contemporary fiction set in college with good found family and solid queer friend groups. I also started reading The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. This book is set at a prep school in Vermont, as many of them are. And then the school is allegedly the third most haunted school in the country. So it's not unusual for students to disappear, but most people just assume that it's not ghost related. Esty Logano enrolls because her father went there and he had passed away and 
that experience kind of uprooted her life. So she really wants to have a more solid place to call home because she and her mom have just been traveling nonstop ever since her father passed. But she feels like going to the same school will just kind of help her reconnect to him and also her roots. So she ends up running into this boy, Mateo, who ends up convincing her to steal a rare book. And that gets her into a lot of trouble. And then she thinks, is this guy a ghost? I'll leave it at that. I'm 30% into the book and I'm enjoying it so far. It's Monday, which means I will probably try to finish it today. And it's coming out tomorrow, September 5th, as of, you know, when I'm filming this. So by the time you see it, the book will be out. That is my update. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I really have to get better at filming B-roll because I love watching vlogs with B-roll and I just never think to do it in the moment. Thank you for sticking around. Have a great day. Bye.